Welcome in, welcome in, welcome to church this morning. We are so glad you're joining us. If you're here in person, we're very thankful that you chose our church to be at. If you're joining us online, we're thankful that you're tuning in. Uh, it is just a joy and an honor anytime we can get together and worship our Lord and our Savior, especially on a beautiful day like today. Uh, it is just lovely outside. But we have a great service planned this morning, so I hope you get as much joy from the service as you do from the weather outside today. Uh, but to get started, we do have some announcements to run down. Uh, the first one is that this week is spring break for schools in the state of Arkansas. And that being said, our church offices will be closed this week, and there are also no Wednesday night activities. So there's no Bible study, no kids programming, no youth group on Wednesday. Take this week off sleep in, encourage your kiddos and yourselves to rest and relax as much as you can. Uh, it's going to be a great week for some rejuvenation and then we get back uh, full swing into stuff. Next week, uh, everything will be back on. So this week, no Wednesday night activities or programming or anything like that for spring break and church offices are closed. Uh, at this time, I'm going to invite Lori to come up because she has some announcements she needs to say. Good morning, everybody. I just wanted to commend everyone for all of the egg donations, but keep them coming. We still want our kids to have plenty of candy to go home with um, on Easter Sunday. Um, so we're really excited about, and I wanna say thank you for those that have brought um, and are continuing to bring um, our stuffed Easter eggs so far. Um, secondly, is that if you have a child in our Salem Kids um, program, we have a, we're trying to update some of our children's information, so I have a registration page um, in the back of the Narthex in our little kids corner, or it's online. So if you get our newsletters, um, there's an online form, so if you have those, just um, fill out the information just so we have some updated information about allergies, um, emergency contacts, and things like that. And the last thing I have on my list is that um, I bet you've noticed the last couple of months that we have had like a coffee station, coffee bar in the back of the Narthex. Um, and so now we're going to have a little bit of a competition that goes with it. I've created some artwork between two different names. One of them is Hebrews and the other one is Holy Grounds. So you get to pick which one. Now there are two options per name. So there's four options back there. There's a pin back there. Um, so go by and put a little tally mark on which one is your favorite. Um, and we will see which one's going to be the winning artwork. Thanks. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Uh, great stuff coming. Remember the challenge, at least 12 dozen stuffed Easter eggs in that box back there from every family or more if you feel so led to do that. What? What'd I say? 12 dozen. No, no, 12 dozen is the challenge at this point. She said she wants as much candy for those kids to go home. We're going to sugar them up and then send them home. That's the whole point of the Easter egg hunt on Easter Sunday. So one dozen, just 12 eggs. Lori says not 12 dozen. If you want to do 12 dozen, she'll be more than happy to have them, I guarantee you. But uh, at least one dozen from uh, each family of stuffed Easter eggs. It'll be lots of fun, a great way to give back to the church. And uh, great stuff coming up. Uh, we do have some birthdays we are celebrating. Uh, we have uh, no anniversaries this week, but we do have um, Michael Pafford's birthday, Danny Hample and Denise Zuber, Parker Kosis, Barbara Kane, Mary Terry, Sheila Simmons, Addison Crumbaugh, Maddox Hamilton, and Julia McPeak. So a whole slew of birthdays this week, and I always encourage you all to call, text, email, whatever you can do, send cards, send cash, uh, anything to just stay connected with people and celebrate their special day with them. Uh, it's always an exciting day when it's your birthday. It's even more exciting when you get presents. So the more presents, the merrier. Um, and I think Brother Justin and I want to get our service started with another couple of trivia questions today just to help wake the brain up so you're not uh, snoring in your pew during the sermon. Uh, so here we go. All right, we got a couple of questions. The first one is going to be really easy. I made it easy. Uh, Brother Justin found a great question. We turned it to true, false. So you got a 50-50 shot. All right. True or false? Kids grow faster in the spring. I'm going to give it to you anyway. It's false. 
For the gusto, for the go of it. He was excited and ready. Yeah, they're, they are growing. Yeah, I don't know, though. I don't know. Uh, all right, next one, and this one's going to be a little, little more difficult. Uh, what, what percentage of people travel over spring break? You gotta shout them out what? 75. Not 75. 25, 50. 50 close ish. 75. 75 is too high. 60. 54. 54 percent is the actual number of people that travel. Good guess on 50. That was close. Yeah, 54. 54 percent of people travel over spring break. So if you're traveling over a spring break and you're going to miss a Sunday, I encourage you, jump on the Facebook page. You can tune in online. It's a great way to stay connected with the church, uh, still participate in worship. Uh, even if you're traveling, it's a great way to do that. So I encourage you all to, to jump online if you end up traveling on a Sunday and are not here. Uh, at this time, are there any other announcements that need to get made this morning before we uh, get to our prayer? All right, hearing none, let's pray, y'all. Most gracious and loving Heavenly Father, what an amazing day it is to worship you. God, for that matter, every day is an amazing day to worship you, but it just seems to be a little more special when we get to gather in your house with your people as one body of Christ. Lord, I pray this morning that as we come together in a spirit of worship, that you allow your spirit to just fall on us and to fill us up completely so we can do nothing else but just worship the amazingness of you. Lord, I pray that you would hear our prayers this morning and you would hear our praise and it's pleasing to you. We saw this in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you all please stand and join us? Our first song this morning is His Name is Wonderful. <clears throat>
Amen and amen. All right, kiddos, it is y'all's time to come down front. Miss Lori is going to be sharing with you all this morning. If you're watching at home and joining worship at home, I encourage you, kiddos, move up real close to the TV. So it's just like you coming down front with Miss Lori. But come on, kiddos. Here, sit right here for me. All right. Good morning. How are y'all? All right, I'm going to play a game. What is the what does opposite mean? Brody. It means something that is not the same as another. Not the same. In fact, I mean it's the direct reverse it's, of that, right? Um they're facing different ways. Facing different ways would be opposite. That's right. So let's play a game. Okay? I'm gonna say a word and I want you to tell me what the opposite of that word is, okay? Can we do that? Are you ready? That Young. Old. Old. Okay. Hot. Cold. 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 Good. Short. Tall. Tall. Big. Small. Small. Happy. Sad. 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 Good. Bad. Bad. Reward. Punishment. Punishment. Here's another one. Dead. Alive. Alive. All right. So that I want that was easy, wasn't it? Okay. So our gospel lesson this morning, our our, um, our lesson, whenever Mr. Russell is going to get up here and going to read it here in a minute, it's so going to talk about uh, about opposites. All right. It has the thing to do with in our lives with and without God. Okay. All right. So I want to show you something. Here, let me reach over y'all. What do you think? about, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm dropping leaves. What do you think about this plant? It's mostly, <laughs> mostly dead, it needs watering, right? So y'all know what my arch nemesis is, so I'm sorry, Mr. Grimmett, I am not the master gardener that my mother is or that many of y'all are. This is what, my, I literally got this out of my front foyer, okay? Um, I didn't have to search very far. All right, so, so it needs some stuff, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. Right? It needs, water. it needs water. It probably needs some food, right? Some, sunshine. some sunlight. Yeah, it needs some stuff, right? Now, I, if I put it into the ground or if I gave it that stuff, it would probably look a little bit better than what it does now, wouldn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it would. Holly, can you hand me that basket right there? Can you hand me that? All right, so what's this? David, can you hold that? What is this? Orange. Orange, right? Now, this is not the same plant as that, right? No. But if I get something so and... Right? But if I could get a fruit tree, could I bear fruit? If I give it all of the nutrients and the food and the water and the sunlight, right? Wait. All right. So, these are kind of like opposites, right? This is what you don't do. And when you do what you're supposed to, you get fruit, right? Or pretty flowers, right? Or things like that, right? Okay. I like fruit, right? I'd rather do it that way, right? Well, the Bible tells us that we are root, when we are rooted in God's love, when we pray, when we read our Bible, and we trust in the Lord, our lives, good things are going to come from it, right? Right? But if we walk away... If we walk away and we don't trust in the Lord, guess what's going to happen? It's not going to turn out well. It's not going to turn out well, right? So if we do what we're supposed to do, if we like look, live in the Lord, we pray, we read our Bibles, and we think about what God wants of us, guess what? We're going to have fruit. And if we turn our backs to Him, we're going to be shriveled up, right? We're not going to look good, right? But good news is, right, we all sin and we're all supposed to perish because, because we all do bad things, right? We're not perfect. Jesus is the only one that was perfect. Or God, right? But good news is, is that Jesus died and we get the opposite of what we deserve. So let's go back to our opposite game, right? Right? Are you testing me on how many I can hold in one hand? All right. <laughs> So we get the opposite of what we deserve, right? Because we don't always do what we're supposed to do, right? We should. Hey, y'all, put, y'all stop playing. Put them back in the basket, please. Thank you. Because we, are, we don't always do what we're supposed to do, right? 
we should, we should look like this, right? But instead, instead, because Jesus died on the cross for us, we get to be fruit. Now, now let me ask you this. Do we go around handing out God's fruit to everybody? Does it look like this? And say, here you go. Here's one of God's fruit. Does it look like that? No. No. What does it look like if we say we are for, uh, fruit of God? Uh, we could give them Bibles. Give them Bibles. We could give people hugs, <laughs> right? Love people, right? Be nice to people, right? So when we give the fruit of God to somebody, we're being kind to them and we're being nice to them, right? Things like that, right? All right, y'all all get an orange. Let's say a little prayer, okay? Are y'all ready? Dear God, thank you for your grace. Thank you for forgiving our sins. Please help us to grow in you so that we can bear fruit. Thank you for your love, Lord. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 All right, get you, get you an orange. And remember, you can have an orange.
Amen and amen. Truth in song right there. Amen. Thank you, praise team. Our scripture lesson this morning comes from the uh, book of Luke, chapter 13, verses 1 through 9. About this time, Jesus was informed that Pilate had murdered some people from Galilee as they were offering sacrifices at the temple. Do you think those Galileans were worse sinners than all the other people from Galilee? Jesus asked. Is that why they suffered? Not at all, and you will perish too unless you repent of your sins and turn to God. And, about, and what about the 18 people who died when the Tower of Siloam fell on them? Were they worse sinners in Jerusalem? No, I tell you again that unless you repent, you will perish too. Then Jesus told this story. A man planted a fig tree in his garden and came again and again to see if there was any fruit on it, but he was always disappointed. Finally, he said to his gardener, I've waited three years and there hasn't been a single fig. Cut it down. It's just taking up space in the garden. The gardener answered, sir, give it one more chance. Let it leave it another year and I'll give it special attention and plenty of fertilizer. If we get figs next year, fine. If not, then you can cut it down. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. As the altar uh, table uh, demonstrates, we're, we're on our way t- towards Jerusalem uh, to, to Palm Sunday and, and Maundy Thursday to, to Good Friday and, and to Easter. And, and along that journey, here it is now the third Sunday uh, of Lent. We're, we're halfway in our journey uh, in the life and teachings of Jesus and, and his journey to the cross. We find him in the, the snapshot of, of Luke's gospel the, this morning uh, being asked some, some questions uh, about current events, if you will. They sort of uh, jump right in, you know, have you heard the news about, about Herod who had so ruthlessly murdered all of these Jews simply uh, for worshiping? And we see this, this hot take of a Jesus who almost seems cold uh, in, in responding to their question about those whom Herod had killed. He responds in, in saying, were they really the worst sinners or, or had others sinned worse than them? And, and then he brings up the, the other news of the day when the Tower of Siloam near the pool uh, in Jerusalem ha- had fallen and some 18 more were killed. This idea of, of God's punishment it, is not a new thing. But it certainly isn't the purpose of Jesus' coming. There were so many instances, in fact, when they thought that, that that was his purpose. Peter, too, and I hate to jump ahead, but, but in the garden, if you should miss it on Maundy Thursday, reaches for the sword when they come to, to take Jesus before the Sanhedrin and then to Pontius Pilate. And, and Jesus uh, heals the man's ear after Peter cuts it off, saying, put away your sword, and it's not the time for that. I haven't come for a, re- for a revolution, but for a resurrection. I haven't come for, for punishment, but, but for mercy. Um, opposites, as, as Miss Laurie so brilliantly uh, said. It's easy, though, to, to look maybe in our times, too, a couple of thousand years later, removed from theirs, it's, it's easy to look in our times too and to see so many terrible things happening in a fallen world. To see the merciless killing even of, of a leader. And the, the, the evil sin of, of a world that, that already seems to be at war. But Jesus came, it seems, for, for more than punishment. In fact, he received the punishment uh, of our very sins. Jesus came for mercy. For mercy. Sometimes in, in our lives too, I think it's easy maybe to, to look at what has happened in, in someone's life and, and maybe perhaps to judge them. Sometimes in, in our world too, maybe we, we see the terrible kinds of events that, that take place and we... And we wonder about about the wrath of God rather than the mercy of God. There are tragedies, make no mistake, in the world today. Natural disasters too. 
I don't know whether that tower was, was, was built shoddy or if the wind blew too hard. It, it doesn't say Jesus isn't focused on or interested in these details in the last days of his life and his journey to the cross, but in saving the world from its sins. In calling men and women, uh, boys and girls, in calling everyone to repentance, to turning around from their wicked ways. And so then he, he tells this parable of the, of the fig tree that, that failed to produce fruit for three years. Now, I, I, I don't know about you, but, but I can relate to, to Miss Lori's uh, story. I certainly have had a few uh, haggard-looking uh, plants at, at my house uh, from time to time. And usually it doesn't take me three years, I'm that wise, to know when something is dead. And, and it needs to be gone. I, I won't tear hers up, but likely if this was at my house, I might try to pull it out of there and, and when nobody's looking, go and throw it down in the creek or in the woods behind the house and, and start over. Go up to the nursery and get something new and put it in that plot and by the door and say, hey, looky here, looky here. We don't need to spend uh, much time or energy um, in calling things dead. In fact, that's, that's really not our job to judge the, the sins of other people. We may rarely admit this, but, but many of us have places in our lives that are a little messy like this plant just before us. That many of us, if we're honest, have places in our lives where, where a little pruning is probably necessary. That's at the heart of this Lenten journey as we look at our lives and the fruit of our lives. As we think about our giving and our generosity, as we, as we think about our stillness, our silence, or our time of prayer, as we think about our, our lives as faithful uh, disciples in following Jesus. And if we are, are willing, maybe, to admit before God, and perhaps even to, to, to say in the presence of someone that we trust, to, to speak of and confess of the places in our life where where God needs to change us. I know I've said it before, but let me say it again. If there were no change, there would be no butterflies in the world. There would be no Easter. And there would be no hope of an eternal home if there wasn't change in the world. And the greatest change that the world has ever seen or had need of is Jesus. A young parent was telling me this morning that, not this morning, I'm sorry, this week, telling me a story about uh, going to a parent-teacher conference. Uh, somebody here in, in our community and in the life of the church and, and, and suggested that uh, as she was heading to the parent-teacher conference, she, she thought a little bit about what she might hear. Uh, she was thinking a little about what kinds of things the teacher might be telling her that, that, that her child needed to work on. Um, and, and as she was uh, sharing this with me in a little text message, I for a second sort of time hopped and, and thought about those parent-teacher conferences when my parents would go and what the teacher might say. But I was so overjoyed as she told me about the way that the teacher said to her that her son uh, in, in school had simply asked as they were uh, going around the room, telling some things about themselves. He asked the question, do you love Jesus? And then he answered his own question and said, because I do. The teacher said that, that he often was talking to people about Christian music and, and how much he loves to, to come to church and, and hear the music. And so I marveled for a moment at the fruit of a little boy. At the fruit of, of the Spirit of God at, at work in, in his life. In the midst of a very uh, violent and turbulent and terrible and fallen world. The, the fruit and the faithfulness uh, of one kid in a classroom 
who forever changed the world simply by saying the name into the air and into a room of people, Jesus, just to say his name. Jesus comes in and encounters them and, and make no mistake, there was trouble in the world. Their own citizens and neighbors had been ruthlessly murdered in worship at the temple uh, in Jerusalem. And a tower had, had fallen and killed 18 more. And Jesus takes it though from the collective. And, and what are we going to do about this and that? And what kind of political upheaval and uprising and revolution are we going to engage in? To making it very personal and individual. And saying, what is it that you need to do in your life in order to get right with, with God today. God could pass judgment on the world so easily. And yet the Bible tells us that God sent His Son not to condemn the world, but that the world would be saved through Him. For God so loved the world, remember, that He gave His only Son. In our Lenten uh, journey, in, in your walk uh, with Christ, in the, in the moments where, where you try to reconcile the, the places in your life and the things that you do and the relationships that you have, as you are in prayer for other people and, and with other people, what are the places in, in your life where, where God can, can help maybe a few of the leaves uh, to fall. And, and that's one of the things uh, uh, striking uh, about the, the story to me. Is that leaves, dead leaves, uh, they fall on their own. Have you ever noticed that? Uh, I invite you to, to visit the church campus regularly this next fall. I mean, after all, it's called fall. They, they managed to make their way down uh, to the earth and get knee deep, I know, right around the, the children, uh, the, the youth house, uh, with little to, to no help. And it takes a lot of people, thank you Stan, uh, who was burning leaves this very week, uh, to get them all gone. Some of the, the things in our lives, the, the trouble uh, that we've had, the, 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 the worry or the burden that we carry, Maybe even the, the places that we feel dry or depressed. They don't require a, a lot of our attention. Just let them fall uh, away uh, on their own. Uh, you know, I remember people saying, you can be like a tree and leave. Uh, you know, uh, you, you can be like a tree and, and let the dead leaves drop. Let the things that aren't of benefit to you anymore the kind of worry maybe or concern that you're carrying about the life of someone else or even in your own. To, to let that kind of anxiety and the, the burden you have uh, allowed the devil to place upon your shoulders and keep squeezing you down, to, to let it fall. To let it fall from the thoughts of your mind, to let it fall away from the chambers of your heart. To, to let it fall from the, the weariness and the, and, and, and the weight upon your very soul. Jesus uh, tell, tells the story uh, of, this, of this gardener though. Who isn't there just to rip it all out of the ground. But, but instead his, his desire is to see it flourish. God's desire is not to see the the whole world around you to fall and to see you to fail, but, but to see you to flourish. He says, give me another year to, to, to get my fingers dirty and, and make no mistake that, that dealing uh, with, with dirty plants is dirty business. Isn't that right? Some of you might even own a pair of gloves. Now, uh, Stan the man, I don't even know if he owns gloves. I, I can't say that I've... He may. He usually just shows up like John Wayne. Uh, with no gloves. 
He put down a challenge just this last week. There was this huge uh, uh, native grass ball, and he said, see if you can move that. And after I strained my back out, he came over and tied Boy Scout ropes on it and put it in the cart. And I thought, okay, show's over. Go back inside, wash your hands, and sit down and start, you know, reading Sunday school lessons. It, it takes some, some, some dirty hands to do some dirty work to get things right in the garden. It takes some, some dirty work and some dirty hands to get some uh, bright red tomatoes in the summertime. But God, you see, is willing to go with us all the way. To go with us all the way. That there's nothing that, that, that God is not willing to do for you and with you and, and through you to transform your life for, for His glory. There's nothing that, that God is unwilling to hear from you. He's often more willing to hear than, than we are ready even to pray. More, more willing perhaps to forgive than, than we are in admitting at times our our need to, to repent. But I want to, to encourage you, as surely even as, as spring break uh, is starting, some of you may be already in the, in the car and on the way, or, or soon will be, to know that, that today uh, is one of these uh, cosmic days, you may know that, that today is the equinox. Did I say that right? Not the car, I know we got some equinox drivers in here, but, but today is an equinox, isn't it? Did anybody know that? It's a day when the, when the, the, the light uh, of day and the darkness of the day, today's the, the spring equinox. You can check me on that. It may be the vernal one, I, I forget. It's spring in the northern hemisphere uh, today and, and autumn in the southern hemisphere uh, of the earth. It's a cosmic day today. It's a day when, when the days of winter, you see, have not won out, but, but they begin to be overwhelmed by the very uh, light of the heavens and the sun. Things will begin to bud and green and, and grow again. I'll tell you that today is a very cosmic day in the life of the church, that we can make a simple choice today to renew our, our life in the Lord Jesus to ask again for, for things to fall and fade away. To ask for our hearts to be made full again. Uh, to, to let go of the disappointments of last week or last month. You may have been a kid like me that at the parents' teacher conference there were a few check marks on there. Right? But, but to know that there's something else on the other side of your spring break. You may be like me in one year when you were hearing Mr. Russell's going to Washington, D.C. and you heard some people were going to the beach and some people were going skiing. And, and I remember asking my dad, it's a true story, uh, where are we going for spring break? And he said, you're going right here. And I said, oh, aren't we going to go to the lake? I said, no, what you're going to be doing is you're going to sand that whole fence down and you're going to scrape and wash all the mold off of it. And you're going to replace and cut some boards where the pickets are rotted. And then you're going to paint the whole thing. And you're going to cut back all of the, you know, the dead bushes in your mom's garden. And that's what, that's what your spring break's going to be. I'm going to come home and lunch every day and see how much progress you've made. And then we're going to have a meeting every night about what you're going to do the next day. Right? It happened. I remember thinking, geez, I was kind of hoping you were going to say we are going to the beach or the lake, something. But I'm, but I'm lucky when the end of spring break came, I got to go back to school and be alive instead of crucified. <laughs> it was a good trade. Uh, be dead or, or, you know, fix the fence and, and say, I'm going to do better, Dad. I'm going to do better in school. I'm going to get this turned around. This is a, 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 a special day today. It truly is the, the beginning of spring in many ways. A day when the light is greater than the dark. In, in this very hour, I, I know we'll soon be out the door uh, on our way. And it is an opportunity for us uh, to have our hearts made full again. I want to ask you, in fact, uh, just in a moment to, to spend uh, some, some time in silent prayer. And we'll pray the prayer of Jesus together. 
But as we uh, do prepare for, for silent prayer in the Lord's Prayer, I want to lift uh, the name of, of Brian this morning. Many of you have heard that, that Steve uh, Davis's son, Brian, uh, was taken to the, the hospital in Little Rock on Friday for, for heart issues, uh, and they determined that he needed to have heart surgery. Uh, the word I had yesterday, I hope somebody's going to nod, is that in fact it may be this very morning. Okay. He may be getting scrubbed in. Uh, so we want to pray for Brian uh, and, and to include Brian in, in your thoughts and prayer. I know our prayer list and prayer wall is many, um, but I just want to lift up prayers for Brian, uh, for all of their family, for, for Steve uh, to, and for their, their medical team. But let us come to rest for a moment um, in, in silent prayer, and, and then we'll pray the prayer of Jesus together. Lord, we don't uh, admit nearly often enough or, or quick enough, but we really need you. Sometimes we, we think our life is on autopilot and, and cruise control, and, and maybe for a season it is, when things seem to be going our way. But in an honest moment, Lord, when we turn away from the headlines of the world and, and the sins even of other people and, and we look at our hearts and in the mirror just long enough, we know that we need you, Lord. That we need you to strengthen us where we're weary. That we need you to, to heal us as, as our bodies are, are sick or, or weak. And Lord, that that we need you to, to water our very souls, to revive us again. That just as surely as we, we hope for the, the fruit of summer, that God, we find renewal in, in the waters of spring. As we uh, begin to say goodbye to winter, to, to colder weather and darker days, and we we see the sun shining so brightly. Twelve hours today. Lord, shine brightly in our lives. And hear us as we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. On earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Join us for our last song, Lamb of God.
Amen and amen. I want to uh, leave you all with just a thought of encouragement and uh, a word maybe to leave you thinking about some things. Uh, in our scripture lesson this morning, it mentioned kind of towards the end, a gardener, but also a servant. And it's exciting to see two people in one story of a parable told by Jesus, because that means there are two perspectives to take out of that story, at least two perspectives to take out of that story. There are lots of times I think we can identify with the gardener who's just tired of the tree not producing fruit, who's tired of that one thing they've been working on in their life over and over and over again, just seemingly not working out, ready to rip it out, get rid of it and move on. But enter the voice of reason. The servant just says, wait a second, before we rip out this thing that we've been working on for three years, why don't we give it just a little extra love this next year and see what happens? I want to encourage you all when you leave here, if you have one of those fig trees that is not producing fruit that you've been working on for three years and you're ready to just rip it out and be done with it, I want to encourage you to give it one more year and a little extra love and see if that changes for your life. If you need help with that or you want some encouragement with it, reach out to myself or Brother Justin, anyone at the church. We'd be happy to encourage you with it, pray with you, uh, pray through it with you, uh, but just be here in ministry with you and for you. So I want you to go in peace and remember, give it a little extra love this week. In Jesus' name, amen.